All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends, and if you are Indonesian, please don't miss this episode. And uh, I'm going to make it short, so you can later translate into Indonesian language. Sadly, I don't speak the language. I would love to. I love the Indonesian people. They are very, uh, very kind and nice people. And uh, the problem there is those people, you know, they are like, uh, you know, born. They're once, once upon the time, a king who want to save his throne from his enemies. They told him, if you join the gang of Islam, as I understand from the story, that will protect you. They will not dare to attack you. So a king, he convert to Islam and then the rest follow blindly. But how many Muslims, if we can call them Muslims in Indonesia, they know even what Islam is about? Like this lady here, you know, she is a hardworking person. You can tell, I mean, she's, she's a, uh, she is not really, uh, you can tell she is working hard to support her family. How much this lady, the sound is not good, guys. And I think maybe from your side. So how much this lady she knew about uh, why she is wearing this hijab as an example, as they call it, you know? How much they knew why Islam, what, what is, what, who's Allah? The Arab who speak Arabic, they do not know who's Allah. They don't know what the word Allah means. So how those people who they are now calling themselves Muslims in Indonesia, they understand Islam. In a language they don't understand, and not only that, they have they've been forced to pray to a God who only understands Arabic. I mean, if the God of Islam is real, if this is not a racist cult made by the Arab for the Arab, why you cannot pray to this God in your language? Why you Indonesian who don't speak Arabic, you have to say the, the Fatiha in Arabic? Allah will not listen to you if you say it in your language. Why he's racist? Don't Allah he understand that you are not an Arab? Actually, look what the Quran said, just to show you how stupid the idea of a praying to God in a language you don't understand. The Quran said that he never sent the messenger to any nation except in their tongue. Chapter 14, verse number 4, and I'm showing this in the in the Indonesian translation, what I don't understand. Because actually, one of you sent me uh, in Skype says, can you please show the, the Indonesian translation? That's why I decided to make it, let us say, Indonesian episode. So look, your Quran saying, even though I don't understand what it says here in the translation, I don't know if it's true, correct, wrong. But in Arabic it says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولِ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ I mean, this verse is a disaster. It's confirmed to you that if Allah is a God and He want to send you a messenger, He will send you an Indonesian messenger who speak your Basha language. Actually, Indonesia have many languages, as I understand, which means you will have many Muhammad there, not one. So Muhammad cannot be a prophet for you because Allah never sent a messenger for a nation unless he speak their language and he is one of them which mean if Allah want to send me to you I'm not qualified for two reasons I'm not Indonesian because I have to be from you and I have to know the language so how Muhammad can be a prophet for you you see this is a contradiction in the Quran and the Quran says clearly I never ever send the messenger unless he speak and why so you may you may understand you may what? You may understand. Make sense. Make logic. Very good logic. Allah will not send you a messenger unless from you, from your nation, speak your tongue so you may understand. So the Quran saying that you will not understand unless it is in your tongue. The Quran saying that, not me. The Quran saying that Allah will not send the messenger unless he speak your language. Why? So you might understand. That make a lot of sense. Allah being smart here. So how Muhammad can be a messenger for you? 
when the Quran saying so you might understand that's mean if it's not in your language you will not understand as simple as that do you see how funny and stupid Islam is one verse saying to you that Muhammad is a messenger the other verse saying to you Muhammad is a, not a messenger for all mankind he is a messenger for the Arab actually if we go in different uh, verse in the Quran the Quran confirmed that Allah he sent Muhammad only for Mecca and what is around it the Quran says that you know where Allah he sent Muhammad <coughs> If you read, you know, uh, let us see which one. We will show you. Uh, this search engine is really horrible. Let's make it easier for me. All right. Chapter 6, verse number 92. It says that Allah, he sent this book. So you might warn those who live around Mecca. Hey, people who speak Indonesian, does it say that? To warn who? Those who live around Mecca. Muhammad here, his business was small. He opened a grocery store in Mecca. And he said, I'm going to be a vendor for Mecca and what is around. Muhammad, when he got bigger, <laughs> his dream get bigger. He don't want just Mecca and around it. He want the whole world. So the Quran confirmed that Allah will not send you a messenger unless he speak your language and he is from your tongue, from your people. The Quran confirmed that Muhammad was sent only for Mecca and what is around it. So how you can follow Muhammad? I mean, who is this stupid here? Actually, if we go to the previous verse, there is something I forgot to mention. It says here, فَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ I don't know what it says in, in the in Indo language, but it says in Arabic that Allah, he mislead the one he like and he guide the one he like. I mean, what's wrong with this God? Is he the devil or he is Allah, God, supposedly? Because he is the one who mislead and he is the one who lead to guidance. So if I am misguided, Allah misguide me. That's what the Quran is saying in front of you. If I am guided, Allah guide me. Okay, so Allah is the illness and he is the cure. Look how stupid that is. He is the devil and he is the God. So Allah is a good God, bad God. He is the devil, he have two faces. One face is a face of a good God who want to guide us and they have other face which is he want to mislead us. So if you are misled, you are misled because of Allah. If you are guided because of Allah. How stupid that can be. Now I'm going to speak about my final point because I said supposedly I will not make the video longer. I mean so you guys you can translate easy. All of us we knew that in Islam they say that Jesus did not die in the cross okay we will go with the theory and the the talk of, of the muhammadan and the quran if we go to the uh, islamic translation in indonesian this is the translation i have nothing to do with it as you see made by muslims i don't even understand what they are saying there but what an arabic is saying that they are claiming that they killed the messiah they killed him not for sure i mean did they kill him or not even Allah, when he, even the one who made this verse is an idiot. He is not saying, for sure they did not kill him. But he's saying, they were not sure they did not kill him. They were not sure. Okay, but what do you mean they were not sure? And then it says that Allah, he made someone look like Jesus in the cross. And look how stupid this statement is. Allah makes someone look like Jesus. Okay, when the Christians are there, so if you are an Indonesian Christian or a Muslim, watching the crucifixion of Isa, as they call him, and you saw someone look exactly like Isa, so what you will believe, you will believe that Isa was crucified. 
I mean, how stupid this, this, this trick is because Allah here is a trick in you. He's not tricking the Jews. You see, if Allah want to save Isa from a crucifixion, he did not need to do this stupid thing because now we have 3 billion Christians believe that Jesus was crucified because of this trick. According to the stupid Muhammad, that Allah, he made someone look like Jesus. And he made you and me think it's Jesus. But hello, it's not Jesus. It was a different person. What this is, this is, this is a kid stuff. And you need to ask yourself, do Allah knew if he made it this way, he would deceive a lot of people, make them believe that Jesus was a crucified. Actually, by, by saying this story, Allah is the one who created Christianity. Because a Christianity is based on what? Crucifixion of Jesus. That Jesus died for us on the cross. So who is the one who created? If Christianity is false, as they claim, that means Allah is the biggest fraud ever and he is the one who created Christianity. Do you see, my friend, how stupid Allah is? Aka Muhammad? And then, if you are a person who saw someone look like Jesus in the cross and you believe in that, what's your fault? Shouldn't we believe in what we see? I mean, if you go to the court and the judge see, say to you, did you see Isa in the cross? You say, yes, I saw Isa. Do he look exactly like Isa? Yes, yes, he looked like exactly like Isa. Do he have a voice of Isa? Yes, he have a voice. He have a eyes of Isa. Yes, he have a voice, eyes of Isa. So if all of this is Isa for you, how, he, how it cannot be Isa? And not only that, the foolish Muhammad, he came 600, after, 600 years after this story to tell us, hello, it is not Isa, it was someone else, it was Santa Claus. Have you ever heard of a stupid story like this? I mean, a donkey can write better a story with his four legs. So this is the question no Muslim can answer. In this video, Muhammad cannot be a prophet for you in Indonesia because Allah he will send the Quran only in your language. And we show you the reference. Muhammad he was sent only for people of Mecca and little around it. We show you the reference. Allah will not send a messenger unless he speak your language and he is from your nation. We show you the reference. So how Allah, he sent you Muhammad, you Indonesian, and he don't speak one word in your language. Actually, Muslims, they say, even in his own language, he do not know how to read his name. So how Muhammad can be a valid messenger for somebody from Indonesia, or somebody from Germany, or somebody from India. India alone have like 400 uh, uh, languages, I think. So obviously, Islam is suffering from mental illness the one who fabricated islam is a fool and my message to my beloved indonesian muslims christians doesn't matter who you are atheist buddha we love you all how a fool can fool you if a fool like muhammad can fool you how fool are you my friend how somebody promised you women naked women in heaven he can be a prophet of god i mean this is not even a pimp Go to night clubs in Indonesia, you will find many prophets like Muhammad, and they are real. They will give you women, women right away. This is a pimp promise. Go to Las Vegas, go to Thailand. God, he will have, so if I pray to Allah, I put my ass up and my head down, then Allah will reward me and he will give me a, a, a lot of women for boom, boom. So this is a stupid religion based on boom, boom tempting your belly and stomach and your private part and oh, by the way what the women she will do in heaven in islam brother allah he promised women they will be in heaven hey, what, what they will do in heaven they will be in, excuse my language their legs is up victory sign i mean this is alone is an insult to your sister to your mother to your family shame on you allah the mother of the muslims are not a bunch of whores who will go there and they have one job is to lift their legs up because the Quran promised the Muslim to be in heaven and he promised the Muslim men they will have women. What is this? And not only women, I mean, this God is racist. He don't like women with color. 
you will not find a single Muslim Muhammadan he is Asian or black everybody in the heaven of Allah will be white very white are we making things up no my friend read the interpretation and read only even your silly translation in your language I call it silly because most of the translation are fake they try to cover up the stupidity of Islam so Allah don't accept you in his heaven if you are Asian he have to do uh, you know like uh, uh, he, he maybe he will put a cream on your skin actually according to the story there's two angels when you go to heaven one of them will give you water you know there, there's a drink you will drink so you drink the water uh, uh, this is the from the fountain of life so you stay youth forever and the other water will make you young and white will change your size and will make your skin whiter than the bright moon. So how this is can be from God? What's wrong with you being Asian? You see God, he created all of us, Asian, black, white, we are brothers and sisters we have one father his name is Adam what do you mean that a black person cannot go to heaven even Muhammad he made fun of the Asian if you remember when Muhammad he spoke about the Turkish and the Turkish not the Turkish now those are after the invasion of uh, 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 Constantinia they raped the Christian women and now they have a blonde Turkish the Turkish the pure Turkish are Mongolian they are very Asian what Muhammad he said about them let us see if I can find it um. He spoke about their faces as if it's hit by a hammer. You believe it? Those are the Turkish. Those are the Asian, making fun of their face. Are those our weak hadith? No, they are very strong hadith. Sahih al-Bukhari. Asian people, according to Muhammad, they have a flat faces like a shield. And he was here speaking about the Turkish, who they are from the Mongolian land, who they are Asian. Do you see it? Here actually he said the word Turk clearly. The hour will not begin until the Muslims fight the Turks, a people with face like, like hammer, hammer shield. And here Muhammad, by the way, he proved to us that he is a false prophet because he's saying that this is before the judgment day, but the Turkish today already are Muslims. The fool Muhammad, he have no idea that the Turkish one day, they will be Muslims. So he's saying that the judgment day will not come until you fight those people. All right? They are your enemy. And he never said they will convert to Islam. So you as an Indonesian, it's an insult to you to follow such a cult. So my friend, I invite you to believe in the Lord of all of us. The Bible says no Greek, no Hebrew, no free, no slave. All of us, we are one by the Messiah. I mean to that. You are Asian. I am Arab. He is black. We are one. All of us in Christianity we are children of God, not slaves. God do not need the slaves. You know, this is a stupid idea to say slaves. I mean, he's God. I mean, he's the, he's the creator of everything. He, he does not need anyone. You know, slavery is because of a need. Somebody want to use and abuse somebody and he need that person even if he's a slave. Like, I don't want to do wash dishes, so I enslave somebody to wash dishes for me. God do not need that. 
I can say I'm a slave of God voluntarily because, you know, I'm obeying him. But he do not need slaves. The God of Islam, he needs slaves. To the point he said that he don't, you know, he, he, he created you to be his slave. There is only reason to create you. Because Allah, he need you. Why he created a human being? Chapter 51, 56. And genie. Genie, what is the genie? Stupid ideas. He's copying from the Persian and the Indian. Genie in the ball. And then he starts fabricating stories. Even genie convert to Islam. Look at this madness. And genie is a shaitan. And genie, he have a penis in his right leg. And when he want to have sex, he have a vagina in the left leg. So when he want to have sex, he shake this with this and he enter this inside that. And bingo, he is doing boom, boom to himself. And then he lay eggs. And then from every eggs, 70, uh, shaitan and shaitana come out, which mean male uh, shaitan. And so the first shaitan is a male. But yet he is a transgender. Or let us say he have a vagina and he have uh, a penis at the same time. It's, it's stupid madness. You know, I mean, how in the world do you believe in this garbage? This is not even good for cartoon for adult. So my friend, Indonesian people, I love you. Open your eyes, open your heart. This is a stupid garbage book full of hatred. Look, if I ask you, you as an Indonesian, you are a good person. Who is the one who spread the hate in the world? You will say Shaitan right away immediately without even hesitating. You know why? Because you have a good heart. But do you know that Allah is the one who spread hate between the Christians? This is Quran, chapter 5, verse number 14. And this is your Muhammadan translation in your language. I don't know why the translation came in so long. I mean, look at the translation in, in Indonesian. Look, the Arabic text is like 10 words, and the translation is like 100. But anyway, it says here that Allah he spread hatred between the Christians until Judgment Day. What kind of God he do that? So if this is what your God do for living, he spread hatred between the Christians. So who is the devil? What the devil is doing to the Christian then? Obviously the devil, he is not doing anything. Allah is the one who is spreading hate. Right? So I want to say, uh, first, thank you for Indonesian Muslims to listen. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, thank you for my brothers and sisters from the Muslims because they are my brothers and sisters in humanity. And, uh, uh, you know, we are all of us, we are children of Adam. And maybe we look different. Maybe we have different languages. Maybe we have different uh, uh, ethnic groups. But all of us, we are children of God, my friend. And the only one he can level you and make you honorable is the Messiah. You see, the Messiah, he said, I came to serve. This is the Lord himself. The Messiah himself the one we worship him, he washed the feet of his disciples. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And he made it clear that in order to be a master, you have to be a servant. In Islam, is the opposite. Muhammad, he started making verses about sleeping with your women, taking your wife. Even the Muslim scholars, they say, that if the prophet eyes fall into a woman, his, her husband must divorce her. This is Jankiz Khan. You know, Jankiz Khan, he like your wife, he take her as if she is a potato. Muhammad is nothing but a Jankiz Khan. Filthy criminal, killer, bloodshed, monster, Dracula. Why if his eyes fit into my wife, I have to divorce her so he can take her? Who, what, who is he? Is he a messenger of God or a horny a priest from this God? Right? We don't want to change topic about CWAX. It's a, it's a stupid topic. I mean, you put it in your mouth, you put it in your nose, who cares? This is a stupid thing. This is one of the stupid things in Islam. Anyway, so I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. Please don't forget to download the video. Add subtitle um, to, to the language of the Indonesian. Uh, you know, add the text so they can understand. Uh, if you can add voice, even better. Uh, my videos is not made for me. It's made for people to learn. So they might be guided and they might see the truth. And the Lord, the Messiah, he said, read the books. 
Search for the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus, my friend, he will set you free. Muhammad, he came to make you a slave. You are a slave of Allah, you are a slave of Muhammad, you are a slave of the Arab, sadly. Look at you, even you change your name, you have Arabic names now. You forget your culture, you forget your language, you know, you have to pray to, to God in Arabic. Your name is Arabic. You get married, you have to say words in Arabic. You convert to Islam, you have to say in Arabic. Why? Because this is an Arab-made cult, made by the Arab for the Arab to dominate other nations. And you are a victim of it. So, with my love for all the Indonesian people, which really, I care for them very much. Use your brain, which is a gift of God. God, he gave you a gift. Please use it. There is no God like Allah. Because this is the only filthy God ever. You can imagine with all the description he provide about himself. And before we finish, I encourage those who call themselves Ustad from Indonesia. Those who call themselves Ustad make big salary. I heard this... Uh, Ustad, what his name? Uh, she called, she, I don't know what his name. Uh, Ustad what? I mean, all of them. $5,000 in every speech he take. I mean, $5,000 you take for a speech? This guy, he lived like a king. I mean, and why a person who is serving God, he want $5,000 to make a little speech? They are like their prophet, those who stand, and you are a victim. The Messiah himself, he did not own a donkey. A donkey. You know what a donkey is? He never take a penny. The disciple of Jesus, they were, they were making miracles, amazing miracles in his name, and they never take a return. They never said, okay, I will make you see if you can give me, if you give me your money. Oh, I'm not, I'm going to bring you back to life if you give me money. Oh, I'm going to heal your son or your daughter if you pay me first. Muhammad, he does that. And all those who call themselves scholars, they do that too. So thank you, my friend, for watching. Translate the video, share it with your friends. And don't forget to pray for the Indonesian, who we love them very much so they can see the truth, and the truth will set them free. Christ is Lord, Islam is false, and we see you soon again. Take care.